Bringing over a real-time strategy game to console is always a daring leap, and Relic Entertainment are doing exactly that with Company of Heroes 3. Yes, the legendary and ambitious series from Relic stretching back more than 15 years is finally making the jump to PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series consoles with the third game in May of 2023. So you can finally get a taste of that real-time, historical, tactical destruction all on a controller. And as daring as it is to try and make RTS work on a controller, being daring is nothing new for Relic and Company of Heroes. Going back to that first game in 2006, it dared to break many conventions in the RTS genre while leveraging the highest end technology available at the time to make it all possible. In today's video brought to you by Digital Foundry and Sega, I will be telling the story of the tech behind Company of Heroes, what made the first game so special, and how that core tech drive continued on into future installments of Company of Heroes thereafter. And to tell the story of Company of Heroes, we really first need to tell the story of Relic Entertainment. The genre-bending DNA and tech of Company of Heroes has its genus in Relic's earliest titles. When Relic Entertainment was founded in Vancouver, Canada in 1997, they took two years to produce their first title, Homeworld. Now there's so much that could be said about Homeworld, but its relation to Company of Heroes is simple. It's Relic's first title, and even with this first title, they are showing that the studio is not just going to chase trends from other real-time strategy games. You can see this in the foundational facets that make Homeworld the game it is. At a time when many other real-time strategy games focused on large ground battles with oodles of units made with tried and tested 2D sprite technology, Relic was on another plane entirely with Homeworld literally as all ships, intervening asteroids, and the play space itself were rendered in three dimensions. In 1999, real 3D polygonal graphics on PC were an absolute rarity in the real-time strategy genre, yet Relic fully embraced them on a technical level and on a gameplay level as well. In Homeworld, the 3D space is the game. It has an entirely different feel to other RTS games of the time as a result. It is more contemplative, slower paced, and requires you to think in those three dimensions. Even the game's user interface is all about teaching you how to play the game in 3D. In a field dominated by Age of Empires, Starcraft, Command and & Conquer, and then of course all of their clone games, Homeworld was different and refreshing. The tech behind it was atypical as well. All of these texture mapped polygons you're seeing on screen here were either rendered slowly in software on the CPU or drawn hyper fast through Direct3D or OpenGL on 3D accelerators in 1999 like the Voodoo 3, Matrox G400, Nvidia TNT2, Intel i740, or Rage 128. As all the various vendors and cards should show you there, the landscape for 3D acceleration had yet to stabilize. In fact, 3D acceleration had yet to become the de facto way that games would be rendered on PC. Software rendering was still very common, and especially in RTS games. So with their first game, Relic were bucking trends on multiple levels. Homeworld's fully 3D camera and gameplay space was practically unheard of in RTS, and Relic made it possible at high fidelity and at good frame rates by embracing new technology. This combined approach of innovative gameplay driven by new technologies which made Homeworld what it is would come to define Relic games in the future thereafter. Each game would have some new technical twist which drove the core aesthetic and even gameplay loop. And it would all come to head really though with the first Company of Heroes in 2006. Now the way Company of Heroes would marry tech with its gameplay in such a groundbreaking way is something that I can only explain by explaining the time period it came out in. To give you the context, that mid-2000s time period was a boom era on the PC for tech and everything was about simulation and interactivity. I would say the big spark behind it all was the jaw-dropping demo of Half-Life 2 at E3 2003, and since then, physics-based gameplay had been weaving its way into PC titles with some being more successful than the others. This was thanks in part to the Havoc middleware, 
a physics engine that could be integrated to drive rigid body physics in games. While physics was making its splash in first person games like Half-Life 2, it still had yet to make a big mark in a defining way for real-time strategy games. Many games in RTS were still being made in the previous mold, now just with 3D polygons instead of 2D sprites. With Company of Heroes, Relic would once again defy the trends and do something different. It would make the physics and simulation a headline feature. To quote the game's announcement press release, Company of Heroes is built on Relic's next generation essence engine, and it also utilizes the Havoc physics engine, delivering cinematic visual detail in a world completely driven by realistic physics. That's quite the promise for the announcement of 2005, and I think it was well fulfilled when the game launched one year later. So how did Company of Heroes utilize this new tech in its gameplay? Well, the game is all about commanding a handful of squads or vehicles, and the primary objective is to not necessarily annihilate the enemy, but instead capture areas on the game map for a certain amount of time. The moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is all about maneuvering your troops into firing positions and utilizing cover to protect your troops from enemy fire. At the same time, this means you want to deny the enemy troops the advantages of cover, so you can have an advantage. You can do this by outflanking the enemy or by destroying their cover. And that's where the physics come in, as every bit of cover you can see in this game can be chipped away piece by piece until it is fully destroyed, with the bits and pieces of cover flying about as physicalized debris. So physics are not just a set dressing, it's an integral part of the gameplay loop with you constantly thinking about taking cover and destroying the enemy's cover, either with explosives or heavy vehicles. When push comes to shove, you can also create your own cover in the game, such as by utilizing heavy artillery to create craters in the game map, where you can then place your troops in them. This tactical maneuvering and cover-based gameplay with destruction was rather new to RTS, and it essentially spawned a subgenre of its own after the fact, and it was all done by leveraging an emerging technology. Much like how Homeworld embraced emerging technologies to drive its base gameplay almost seven years earlier. Of course, it wasn't just all about the physics back in 2006, as Company of Heroes was quite the looker on release. It was filled with in-game cutscenes, per-pixel shading with normal maps, real-time shadows, and loads of detail on the units and buildings. And it did not stop at release, as Relic would embrace the new DX10 API with the 2007 Opposing Fronts expansion pack, which would use GPUs like the 8800 GTX to further improve the visuals in Company of Heroes with a patch. That patch would see improved character models and texture work, improved shadow filtering with DirectX 10, and improved terrain details with the help of DirectX 10's instanced alpha shell textures to give the grass that cool 3D look. After the release of the DirectX 10 patches, Company of Heroes had an unparalleled level of graphical fidelity in the RTS field, and it even held up surprisingly well next to AAA first-person shooters of that era. Soon enough, Relic would be moving on to other games after Company of Heroes, and the question on my mind at that time was, how exactly would Relic manage to up the ante in its sequel? The graphics were already great, and the gameplay was second to none, so how would they improve on it? The answer came soon enough in 2013 with the release of Company of Heroes 2, and here once again Relic managed to utilize new tech to evolve gameplay in a way that hadn't been seen in other real-time strategy games before. Now, Company of Heroes 2 does many things sequels do. It has a wider scope and greater detail. Just putting the character models of the same units from the first and second game next to each other, it is easy to see the roughly seven years of tech advancement. Yet, Relic wanted to push the second game further beyond that in the gameplay in a very thematic way. As history tells us, the Eastern Front in World War II was beyond brutal, and the inclement winter weather played a large role in many of that conflict's most decisive battles. To capture this, Relic made the weather a gameplay element in its own right in the second game, and it is driven by new tech. When a blizzard hits and visibility goes to zero, your troops need to seek warmth and shelter to survive the cold and continue fighting. And outside of the blizzard moments, the movement of your troops and tracked vehicles is measured in the snowy terrain itself, with each tank tread and footstep leaving behind 
indentations in the snow where your opponent can then use those tracks to get a sense of your troop movements. So the wintry terrain and weather is informing the tactical decisions of the players. Like the first game and Homeworld before it, this new snow mechanic was driven by new tech, and the evolution of technology on the PC platform in general once again played a big role in shaping which tech relic would leverage to do this. In the year 2013, PC was once again on a boom curve. The last gen consoles were on their last legs, and developers were using the far more advanced PC hardware of that era to spec out and make next generation experiences. So a number of games released on PC hardware at that time look radically different and better on PC in comparison to console. A big reason for this was DirectX 11, where developers were learning to use compute shaders and hardware-based tessellation. This latter feature of tessellation would be the driving tech behind the Snow and Company of Heroes 2. So Relic utilized this new tech to enable this new gameplay system. This is quite intense when you compare it to other titles, which often just had DirectX 11 graphical effects being purely visual and not being an enabling factor to a gameplay system. In this sense and others, Company of Heroes 2 is very forward-looking with its tech, almost to the point of controversy on release. See, Company of Heroes 2 did not support SLI and Crossfire, which was controversial at the time. And the reason why it didn't support SLI or Crossfire is because its tech was forward-looking. In its rendering, Company of Heroes 2 leverages data from previous frames to inform the drawing of the current frame. This temporal rendering at the time was not too common, hence the controversy, but Company of Heroes 2's rendering was really the sign of things to come, a glimpse of the future. Nowadays, temporal rendering or using previous frames to render the current frame is the dominant way rendering is done in games. SLI and Crossfire have also long since gone the way of the Dodo as they don't fit into the paradigm shift of temporal rendering. Company of Heroes 2 was ahead of the curve here, and it just goes to show you how sometimes being on the bleeding edge of tech, like the game was, can invite controversy. As time went on, the controversy went away, and Company of Heroes 2 now looks and plays all the better in the year 2023 due to the ambitious decisions it made for tech more than a decade ago. And with that being said, we're back in the year 2023, with Company of Heroes 3 already having been released on PC earlier in the year. With this third game, the tech and gameplay of the series is well honed as it's building off the pioneering systems of the first and second games. The new technical challenge here in Frontier for Relic with this third game is to open up this great series to a new audience and bring the game to consoles. With the game releasing on May 31st on consoles, Relic looked to be doing just that and finally after more than 15 years, console players can enjoy and experience the gameplay in one of the best real-time strategy game series in the history of gaming. A series built on the foundations of Relic's ambition to always push tech forward in RTS games in a way that enables entirely new gameplay that really haven't been seen before. Which is something I hope this video has been able to show and do justice to the great game series that this is. If you did enjoy this retrospective video on the Company of Heroes series, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, hit that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you want to help us out, support DF on Patreon to get years worth of our content in high quality for download. Other than that, comment below, follow on Twitter, and as always, this is Alex, bidding you farewell and auf Wiedersehen!